Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Affinity Photo and the spherical filter. Here's the spherical filter. It's a great effect for creating spheres and also distorting designs and also creating subtle designs. So if you've got a design like slightly this is slightly bent there, you can manipulate that design to put it slightly straighter. And you can see what happens. Just there you've got that design there. Is it that? Looks slightly good. However, click apply. Well, I'm not going to. See, because the first thing is, where is the spherical filter? So you can find it in filters. It's also available in the layers as well. I'm going to go through that a little bit later. So filters, and then go down to distort, and spherical. There's spherical. Now, it's not in order. I'm not certain why. It'd be nice if it was. But uh, spherical there. And always puts the panel down there. We should put it up there where it's more available. Now, what I want to do, I just want to resize that got the radius you've got intensity now you can put the intensity up to 100 percent that's it now i'm just going to quickly show you so i can put 300 percent nope but you can also go the other way as well so you can see you can go both directions so you sort of suck it in and also of course punch it out as a sphere so you've got a sphere most of them i'm going to do with sphere but you can of course use the other one the intensity at minus 100 percent as well or anything in between then you've got radius, but this one you can change. So you can put 4,000. You can also put that to 100%, and you can put it to 4,000 instead of 40. That's not much use. So there you've got 40. And you can see then when you rotate that, you can see rotate the design like that. So it, unfortunately what happens, and you can see the problem, it does have a tendency to stretch the pixels. So you can just see at the edge there, not so ideal personally. However, that's what, but you can also see, you can change the radius, the position, the origin point. And I'm just going to put that back down 100% there. And you can just move that around. So if you can, you want to, you can put it in a different position, put it there, put it there, put it there, and so on and so on. What you can also do, click apply, you can apply it multiple times. So you've got the effect there. You can go to filters, and there's an option here, and this is the same for all of the filters. So you can go for repeat sphere. And you can apply. Now it uses exactly the same settings. So you've got the origin point, and you've got the radius, and you've got the intensity. All exactly the same. So you can apply. And the thing is, when you do this, you'll get to a certain point and it just won't work, won't do any more. Because it will just stretch it and stretch it and stretch it. And then it becomes ridiculous to stretch anymore. You'll just get the folk, that central bit. So you can undo that. But it's quite nice if you want to really push the, the filter far more. Also, what you can do, just going to go repeat again. You can go over here to a layer menu and fade sphere. Must admit, I'm not certain why I didn't put it there, but maybe there's a reason. Obviously, maybe it's just more sensible there. However, fade sphere, and you can see what happens. You get the fade effect there, and again, there's fade down the bottom. Of course, I'll just put it over here, and you can see it just blends it. Now, it's not, I think, personally, the best of fades. I mean, obviously, it's doing what it should do. But it just doesn't really create such a great sort of image, I think, the fade. And you've also, of course, got the blending modes. So you can run through those. If you've got that difference, you can see the effect there. Which is not particularly elegant looking effect. But anyway, so that's option as well if you want to fade it. But I say, most of the other filters probably work slightly better than that. Distortions, I always think, have a slight problem with the fade. Now, what you can also do, you can use maybe like layers let's just go for a layer so i can just go to this one and i can duplicate this layer so layer and duplicate and i'm just going to create a quick like that. I'm just going to resize it i could use it the same of course as before but i'm just going to resize it and what i can then do is i can go to filters of course spherical distort and spherical and now you see exactly the same problem it's set back to zero it's always a pity i think it would be nice if it didn't do that but just use the last values would be nicer but there's now the thing is you notice it just slightly goes over the edge not very much but it does slightly go over the edge just a little bit there doesn't extend much beyond that you can go that way as well you can see it just slightly over the edge there however what you can do you can push that obviously up to thing however as before you can still change this value you can push this value beyond what it says is the max so go 4,000. At 4,000, what you can do, you can see then you can actually rotate it. However, of course, the trouble is it puts it, as soon as you release it and you click on it again, it puts it back to the 
position. So you just gotta push it over here and then that's it. Now, remember to click apply. And you've got this lovely design there. And of course you can move. Now, unfortunately I pushed it so far, you can see the, the wall there. Not so ideal. But you can see you can create distortions on the layers. And of course you can use many other designs as well. You can use shapes, you can use obviously type and many more. Just gonna remove that now. Also what you can do, you can use channels. Channels are great, so you can go over here, you've got channels panel. All the panels can be found in view, studio, and channels. And you can just go to composite red. So composite red, you can then go to repeat sphere. So you can see the distortion there. Then you can go to composite green, always go to another one. So filter, distort, because it uses the same settings. It's always nice to just go and change. And again, set it back to zero. And then you can move that and distort that. Move that around, click apply. And you can do exactly the same, of course, with the blue one. So composite blue and go to filters, distort and spherical. And again, change those values. And you can see, and there's some, someone pointed this out to me, you've got here the navigator. So let's just go over to the navigator. You can see the navigator here. It actually shows you what the image looks like. With that, obviously, RGB. It's in the RGB. That's what it looks like, the end result. So you can see, you can see the distortion there. You can modify there. And you can, of course, push it again beyond that limit. So let's just go for 4,000. And you can distort that around and it will update there updates here as well of course but the only thing is of course you just see it as the blue channel click apply this helps at least see the whole thing which is quite nice so that's someone pointed that out to me it's nice to use I, never, I didn't realize you could do that but yes it's shown there so we can do click there and you can see the end result so you can get a really nice little distortion there with all the colors mixed in as well so if you want to create a nice distorted effect read quite good oops that's a feature that baffles me i don't know why it always does that just rotate weirdly just rotates suddenly so let's just undo sphere right now just reset that reset rotation really not certain why it suddenly rotates anyway weird got this you can use selections so just go over here i'm just going to use a Weirdly a spherical. Well, you don't have to use just a spherical. You could use, of course, rectangle. You could use freehand, perfectly reasonable as well. And then you can just apply it if just apply it here. So just there. What you can then do, you can then go to, and of course, what you can, let's just, before I do that, I'm going to apply an effect. So filters, I'm going to go for blur and Gaussian blur. Just quickly apply it cows in blur so you can see a nice blur there and then let's see it makes it probably easier to see the thing so just go there to selection just quickly create selection and now what i can do i can go, go to the filters and i can go to distort and i can go to spherical and then what i can do i can change that of course change that and this time of course what happened or probably that makes it worse to be honest so you can see it just applies within that sphere and again, you can still do exactly the same. You can set the value up to greater. So what you can do, you can click apply and you can repeat, repeat, repeat. And you can see the sphere there. So sometimes actually when you do it, probably do not apply a blur because that probably, so you can always again, let's just go and show with a different one. Let's go for freehand. So you can just create a little freehand design there. And now what I can do, go to filters, repeat sphere. And you can see the sphere there. Apply a couple of times, three or four times, so you can see this. Uh, it doesn't extend beyond obviously this selection, which is quite nice that it doesn't do that. Now, what also you can do, let's just go deselect that, uh, go back. You can also use this as a pattern layer. So, got this design here, go to a layer and pattern layer from selection. So, you've got the selection, you can turn it into a nice seamless pattern. So, new pattern layer from selection. You can see it over here in the layers. You can see a pattern. It says pattern there. What you can do with that selected, you go to the move tool and then you can resize it. And you can see what happens. You get this lovely repeat. Now you don't have to have this. You can go up here in this corner and you've got a mirror. And you've got a much nicer effect there. And again, select that. And you can see you can move it around. But also what you can do, you can apply the good old spherical filter. So filters and distort and spherical and now you can do you can see you've got the sphere there and you can 
move that around. It's quite nice because what happens, it sort of goes into each other as it goes over that border. And you can just increase the intensity, increase that, and not push it too far. So you can still see it. And you can see as you move that around, it sort of just blends nicely together. And of course, apply it like that. And then click apply. And of course, you can apply it multiple times, do exact the same as before. And you can see the effect there. Just apply just to that bit. And it's still live. So this design can be rotated, moved around. And then, of course, what you can do, filter, peep. And you can see then it applies to that. And you can create that. And of course, you can go there, rotate that around, and move that around, and so on. You can see the thing and repeat sphere. At some point, it will do something. Oh, it's probably because it's outside. Look, it's probably over there. Yeah, you can see what happens. It just requires it to be over that area. Right, so I'm just going to remove that. And that's the great thing about pattern layers. With some of the things, you, you have to spend a lot of time undoing, etc. But you can just simply just remove it like that. And that You can still see it there. And you can always remove it just down it completely by remove, delete. Well, also what you can do, which is really nice and probably makes it even easier, here's layers. This is the key thing. Layers, got it selected. And it's just applied to this. So when you go to a layer, new live filter layer, and you can go to distort and spherical. I'm always relieved when I go to this. I always think, I know I checked beforehand, but spherical is in here. Not all of the filters are in here. Some of my favourites, deform and mirror, are not in this, which is always a pity. However, spherical. So I've got spherical there, which puts it down there as usual. And you can see what happens. You've got exactly the same panel. You've got intensity and you've got radius and you do exactly the same. You move that. Of course, you've got preserve alpha, more useful obviously with layers and things, but so but uh, obviously this is a layer. But you can also of course merge the result together if you want to do that. Perfectly reasonable. And also you've got here, so you can blend, so you can make it sort of fade away a bit, which is quite a nice effect. That should be quite nice in animation. If you could capture that however what you can do you've got again blend modes now i'm not so keen on blend modes for this i must admit but say linear burn doesn't give a great result maybe it depends on the image but if i had a nice gradient because you can use it obviously with a gradient design etc with text as well so you've got pin light there or something like that and you can see you can just apply that and you can see the effect there as you that's quite weird actually that looks quite surreal sort of it's sort of coming out from the building <laughs> that's how that's quite odd However, what you can also do, of course, you can always click there. I'm just going to remove all those. And you can, of course, just, if you want to, layer. You can flat merge visible, so you can just merge it into one. And you've got the pixel layer, and you can remove that if you want. So it's all just done, finished off like that. Also, what you can do, which I didn't do, you can go over here with shapes. So I'm just going to go and set the shape. Uh, triangle tool, just as good as any. And now can't see that oh it's because that's below that does help right it's above there now so you've got a triangle of course i could have chosen any of these other shapes and also i could have created shapes as well but what you can do you can also go over here to filters of course you could use the uh, layer as well but you can go to filters distort and down to spherical and again just go there you can see what happens it just distorts that and again you can see that move now it might be more effective maybe with a star design or whatever but you can see the distortion there and again again you can extend it beyond the limits push that up and maybe make that 3000 and distort the design that way so it's a nice way of distort so if you want a nice distorted triangle or distorted star you can always just do that so click apply like that and again so if i go to let's just do that star just star there, let's just quickly create a star. And let's just make that with a bit more, a few more points. So you've got the design there. What you can do, is exactly the same as before. Unfortunately, the repeat is not enabled. I don't know why that, they didn't do that automatically. It makes no sense. But however, distort and spherical. And again, exactly the same as before. You can extend that, and of course that pushes that out. And you can then see the effect there. And create some interesting distortions, but what you can also do, of course, you can put it to 4000 or something. I don't know if it's at 5000, put 5000, try it, and then you can see you can distort that, or maybe make it 3000. 
Okay, and you can distort that star. So you can have that bending around like that. Create some very unusual designs that way. Click apply. Of course, it's a pixel layer. Pixel layer, so you, you know, it's not a vector effect anymore. So you can't modify the star settings at that point. Also, you can do type. So if, we, if I want, I'm just going to, let's just remove that. Let's just quickly create some type. And I've got some type there. I'm just going to go to text, insert for the text. So very small, of course, very tiny text. Doesn't matter. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to filters and distort. And again, spherical. And again, slightly the same problem as before. Puts it down there. And then you can see what happens. The text is distorted. You can see as you move that around, you should be able to make it out very tiny. It's a good way, I suppose, of actually zooming in to the text, sort of. Just about make it out. Very, very tiny. And of course, you can do exactly the same as before, say 4,000, and then you can distort the text that way to kind of bend it around. And of course, you can have multiple layers and do all those sort of things for those and combine them in many other ways. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time about Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Publisher, etc. Many others. Also, uh, if you've got any comments, questions, please put them in the comments. Always great to hear. If you've got some other ideas for this, always excellent. Also, a dislike or like, always appreciated. Either way, thank you much.